Hi Cancer, this is your love reading for the month of May 2018. It's for Cancer Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. It's also if you're spying on a Cancer. Um, we are going to do couples first and then singles, no, I'm going to do singles first and I'm going to do couples after. But I will put in the description box a little uh, blurb about when the couples will start if you want to skip by the singles. If you are in an on-again, off-again relationship, um, you might want to watch both because things might apply to both of that or make, maybe you're sort of dating somebody but it's not Facebook official. Um, that's what I would recommend for you. So let's go ahead and get started. this but for those of you who um, don't know if you go to my website and there's like a link in the description box below you can sign up to win a free reading every month and so like you just sign up once and you're automatically in the drawing forever style and so I just wanted to let you know okay that's it okay single cancer what kind of things from the past are affecting your ability to draw in what you currently want right now. And they're saying, you know what, you know what's important to you as far as like fun relationships go, you need to have passion, you need to have excitement, enthusiasm, all of that stuff. And you really have this expectation of honesty in your relationships. Um, however, there might be a little bit of sadness that you're still carrying over from the past um, that sort of lingers with you now and inhibits you from being able to draw in the things that you want. So what is it specifically that you want in the month of May for um, you know, finding a potential partner. And what they're saying is you want somebody that helps you to stay like optimistic, that helps you to see the bright side of things. You want somebody um, that isn't going to disappoint you, that is going to actually be an asset to your life, that makes your heart big and open and full of love and all shiny and stuff like that. Now, the hidden aspect of things that you want is that you want to feel somebody very deeply. You want somebody deeply in touch with their emotions, especially because you are a water sign. Um, so what is it that you can expect in the month of May? And they're saying, well, you can be very in touch with your feelings. You might feel a little bit moody this month, and that's okay. Um, they're saying it's not necessarily a month where you have to do anything with those feelings. It's more just feeling them and um, kind of like coming to conclusions about them so that you know where to apply your efforts, where to apply your work, and um, getting really detail-oriented about what it is you're trying to attract as far as a partner goes into your life. So factors that you will be um, experiencing or kind of have some sort of an impact in your love life in May are like um, breakups from the past. Like this could be divorces or divorce-like relationships, relationships that were really long-term, or you live together, they seem super serious, things like that. It's taking longer than maybe you wanted for those to heal for some of you. Um, it's not that you're crazy, it's just like these things take time. Um, but May is a really good month for healing, actually, because you are very aware of your feelings, but you're not taking them to like extremes. You're very logical about what those mean for you. Now the rest of you that that doesn't apply to, they're saying um, this month, a lot of your focus might be more on like self-care, on self-love, you know, um, setting yourself up to achieve the things that you want. You might be very work focused and therefore um, a little bit closed off to being open to receive love just because your focus is elsewhere. However, I would be, if you are one of these people who is very focused on the things that they want and like showing themselves love and like learning to love themselves in the current situation that they're in, this might be a very lucky month for you in which you meet your happily ever after soulmate kind of person. So good for you. It might come out of nowhere, but you have to make sure that your heart chakra is big and wide and open in order to receive that, okay? So a heart chakra meditation might be something helpful for you. Another helpful thing if you're interested in it is um, I have like a sleep affirmations meditation that does like brainwave entrainment uh, on my website. So I will put a link to that as well. Actually, I'm going to write that down so I don't forget. Um... 
Okay, there we go. So now, um, how are people that you might be meeting or talking to this month going to perceive you in regards to love? And so what they're saying is a lot of them are going to be like, this person's totally not over their ex. They don't stop talking about them. They haven't moved on from it. They're not totally open. Um, but for the rest of you that that's not the case, they're like, wow, I want to take things to the next level with this ca uh, cancer, like immediately. Like, this is so lucky that I met them and I have to snap them up and grab them and make them mine before they are snapped up by somebody else. And so for those of you who are in that kind of experience, you might be snapped up by your forever soulmate kind of a person. Like they will totally appreciate you. Um, what can get in the way of finding love this month? And they're saying like, you might be trying to um, control, you know, how you meet somebody, when you meet somebody, where you meet somebody a little bit too much instead of just being open to the possibilities and letting the universe do its work for you. They're saying um, your feelings also, like if they get to be too much, you might start focusing on things unrelated to love and therefore kind of closing your heart off to it. So that's something you want to be aware of, but it's kind of something we've already mentioned, right? Um, so what is the best course of action for you in the month of May in order to find the love that you desire? And they're saying feeling really confident about it is going to be awesome. Keeping your eyes open and looking for love outside of the places you usually do. So if you strictly are an online dater, um, you know, when you're out places, try to make on eye contact with other people. Try to start conversations with people you typically wouldn't just because they're good looking or just because, you know, they are reading something that is like aligned with your interests. You never know what could happen. It's very important that you kind of open your eyes to possibilities outside of where you've already looked. Uh, but keeping in mind that you can't necessarily control the outcomes of that, okay? It's just more about being open, having a super open heart chakra. They're saying you might be a little bit confused about what it is that you want, and that's totally normal um, for you this month with all of these feelings. So focus on the things that you know for sure make you happy, bring you joy, um, you know, in relationships. So, for example, if you like to go out a lot, then you would want to try to attract somebody who also likes to do the same kind of activities you do. Um, if you're a homebody, you're going to want somebody who likes to sit down and watch TV and snack. Um, write all of these things down because it, uh, writing is powerful. That's helping us to attract the things that we want. And you can maybe experience results very quickly. And all the reasons I say maybe, like boom overnight for some of you and not for others, is because there are some cancers who haven't stopped ruminating or thinking about their past relationships, okay? Now, well, Oh. They're saying um, for any cancer who is like living in this like unhappy depression right now, it will not be you that attracts somebody. So shift that vibration, open that heart chakra, try gratitude journaling if you need to in order to do that because then you will be able to draw in this soulmate this month potentially. And I know the month's half over. I was sick so I didn't make the readings as early as I wanted, um, but good. You know, because you've probably gone through a lot of the emotional aspects so far this month, and now you are ready to, boom, draw them in. Okay, so what uh, kind of outcome will you have if you do not follow this guidance? And they're saying, well, um, very quickly things will change for you, but not in the direction of your love life. Things are going to happen for you that are positive and wonderful, but you will not be moving forward in the direction of love this month. They're saying nobody's going to think that you're like a bitch or anything like that, but they're just going to say, you know what, like, eh, they are content without like a person, like, even though I might be interested in them, I'm not going to approach them. I don't want to talk to them necessarily because they don't seem like they need me, which is maybe not a bad thing because that person might be a little bit codependent. Am I right? But the thing is, is like, um, until you're vibrating at a higher vibration and like really, really appreciative of the things that went wrong because they were lessons or whatever, um, it's going to be hard to draw that person in. Okay. So looking at couples for cancers, I'm just going to write down what time it is. Okay. So coupled cancers. Okay. First things first, they're saying some of you are hiding some paranoia or suspicion feelings that you have about your partner. And what is the outcome of doing that? Well, ultimately, it's just going to make you unhappy because it's something you're going to focus on and ruminate on and it can play out negatively in your relationship. And also, maybe there's nothing to be worried about. So if you just speak that to them, that would be better. Um, so then it can all get cleared up. Okay. 
So elements of the past, either with your partner, like uh, things that happened in your relationship or from past relationships that are playing out this month for you now are the following. Okay, number one, you know that whatever you want, you can manifest. So if you want a different relationship, it's totally possible. Having that awareness is huge. Um, if you want a better relationship, like if you want things to be better in the relationship that you're in, that's also possible. Now, the thing is, is that there has been a little bit of an emotional disconnect because you're spending more time on yourself. Now, that doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing, but your partner might be interpreting this as a lack of enthusiasm for them. Now, at the end of the day, you both want the same things. You want the same outcomes. You want the relationship to head in the same direction. However, you have different ideas on how to approach that. Now, in communicating about this is going to be very healing for you, even though um, they might try to sort of bend and um, tell you like, well, you know, this is not going the way that I want it to. I wish that you would change. Now, should you listen to them? Should you change? And what it's saying is no, there is a happy middle ground compromise. So if you are with a fixed sign, you're really going to have to hold your ground. If you're with a more mutable sign of the zodiac, um, this will be easier for you. But I mean, ultimately, you might want to cross watch and see what's going on um, for their side in order to know how to best handle this or get a personal reading. Now, um, they're saying this relationship doesn't seem like it's ending or anything like that as a result of any of these sort of energies. So don't let that be that fear or that worry that we kind of started with, okay? Now, um, what is it that you should be expecting in your love life this month? And they say that things will be balanced, um, you might have a lot of things going on, a lot of plates to juggle with, you know, your work, your life, your relationship, potentially your family, friends, all of that stuff. But you can totally handle it. Um, things don't necessarily need to change. This month they will naturally change on their own. Um, August and September, I'm getting specifically, will kind of just be like a different time period where things are a little bit easier for you. They're saying so um, focus on the things that are good in the relationship as opposed to the things that are sad or um, make you feel down because that will help you to kind of reconnect on an emotional level with your partner. Now, um, what kind of things will your partner kind of perceive about you or uh, like your, like what are they picking up on from you, whether that's true or false, in the month of May? And so they're thinking that you just might not be as emotionally and deeply connected and bonded to them. Uh, as previous. And now they're not necessarily viewing this as a bad thing. They're like, okay, well, at least like my partner isn't like manipulative and abusive and stuff like that. But like, I want them to be more present in this relationship. And I know that if I need them, they are there for me 100%. But I almost want them to kind of just like reach out and show me um, that I matter. Because right now I don't feel like this relationship is for the highest good. I know that it can get there. But um, I'm starting to have my doubts if they really care or not. Like I'm not concerned that my cancer partner is um, cheating or, you know, that they're looking to cheat or they're keeping their options open or anything like that. I'm more just trying to be in this, like, element of, like, hope and, like, anything can happen. But I'm a little bit worried that maybe they don't care about me. And so what they really need you to do is open that heart chakra big and wide for them and maybe just remember, um, remind them how much you care and make, make an effort to have, like, deeper conversations or, you know, to show love in a different way than you nor normally do so that they do feel that connection, okay? Now, um, what can get in the way of fostering more love into the relationship this month? And like it's saying, you know, your your relationship is solid, but you might just seem a little bit closed off to being open to receive love. And so they're saying, you know, being really confident and trying to express like a need for fun and adventure and excitement or even being a little bit more sexual with your partner this month will help so much. Shifting your perspective to try to see what it is that they actually need, um, the reason why they might not feel particularly connected to you on an emotional level will do wonders for your relationship. So what is the best course of action for you? And they're saying, well, Here's the deal. The challenge is to feel really balanced and hopeful about the relationship, to continue to think about goals when you have your own shit going on, and then to take the actions on those. So um, 
ultimately they're saying there are potentially some things in your relationship or like your day-to-day routines that have to come apart so that new better ones can be built in their place and they're saying like your partner might disagree with that they might not think that that is the best thing but ultimately um you need to follow your own gut instincts and if you're going to be listening to your partner and um, taking their advice just for what it is instead of like following your own emotions um that is not going to be the right way for you to handle things this month it will make you feel insecure and it will also make you um start to sort of resent them and like you know even though they might be feeling like you're not totally connected now you're going to be the one feeling like things are not connected and um, as loving. And then you're going to wonder like, is this person even for me? They can't possibly be my soulmate. Like why the fuck am I in this relationship? It's not going to go anywhere. And so it's very important that you follow the advice or the guidance given in this relationship. Um, They're saying like, you do need to put yourself first though. And that might not be like an exciting thing, but you know, it's like that whole concept of um, love languages, right? Like you can't give love from an empty cup. And so if you explain it to your partner, maybe you read that book together, you're going to feel more connected and you're going to be able to have a successful and like long-term relationship that just grows more and more beautiful. Like I said, it will become easier in August and September. So try to do things that are fun, that are exciting. Um, Try to put a focus on the passionate aspects of your relationship. Um, Like I said, being a little bit more sexually active with your partner than usual and spontaneous will be a good thing. If you do not do this, they're saying you will not get what you want out of your love relationship this month. And that's just the unfortunate um, truth of the matter. So that is your love uh, tarot horoscope for the month of May. And I will see you in June. Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20-minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!